we're talking the new versus the old gen ai and cobol i mean <laughs> paul this has got to be paul c paul smith goodson okay because he always uh he always brings it with some of the wackadoodle stuff so hey, there's nothing more interesting than uh cobol no oh, i yeah. love cobol you know I, I i get reminded of cobol like every 20 years you know, <laughs> on, uh, on kind of what's going on and you're a d today pat right <laughs> Cobol is actually a big problem uh, for the industry. It's about a hundred billion dollar problem if you tried to to take uh, Cobol and reprogram it with programmers. It would uh, it, it would run up in the billions. So, uh, a, IBM was working on this a couple of years ago. I wrote an article in Forbes about uh, the problem and how IBM was attacking it. Um, and at the time, well, what was, is the hey hey Paul real quick. What what is the problem? Is it that the programmer, the person who wrote it, is retired or dead? It's several, yeah, it's several problems. I mean, uh, Cobalt's not as efficient as it used to be. A lot of the uh, original programmers have either died or retired, so they don't have the resources. Uh, new people don't like to work on it for obvious reasons. So, so it's kind of a you know it's just kind of been hanging around and uh, being tolerated, but uh, they do want to convert it. So. Um, so anyway, it uh, um, they've got uh, originally they were going to use CodeNet to try and uh, do the conversion, and it looked like it would do the job and just take quite a while. But now since generative AI has come along, I mean that can do about anything. So uh, IBM's uh, uh, AI products are uh, Watson X dot AI, Watson X dot Data, and Watson X dot Governance. So they're going to use uh, Watson X dot AI to run this uh, Watson X code assistance. And uh, that's going to be a product to try and develop uh, to, to do the translation of code. Uh, this, uh, this new program can handle, I think it's like 115 different languages it can, can, can uh, program use to program uh, into whatever you want. So um, it uh, when, when they when they when they trained it, it took 115, 1.5 trillion tokens to train it. So that's quite a bit. I mean, for a, for a language model, a, a token is part of a word. So you can kind of guess, you know, a token in uh, programming languages is, is part of a string. So, mm -hmm. so anyway, it should be interesting. Uh, when when I when I was writing this article, I talked to uh, Dr. Puri, which he was the one that was working on CodeNet, and I asked him the question. I said. Uh, uh, do you ever expect CodeNet AI to, to, to be able to uh, program itself? And he said, basically said, I expect it to be able to self-learn, but it's going to be years and years before it's able to do its own programming. So that was in the 21. Yeah. And here we are now. Hmm. AI is going to do it. Oh, I love it. This is almost a, a follow-up discussion, which it's, it's great to see what was said in the past. By the way, the, the interesting part, I love picking up old headlines of old magazines and newspapers to to see what was said. And, uh, you know, the death of uh, comes to mind, right? Uh, in 1985, desktop publishing came out. It was going to be the death of creatives, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then PowerPoint was then again going to going to going to put another. Remember Harvard Graphics, you guys? Mm -hmm. um, and then now, right, with generative AI, we have Adobe Firefly where you can have a picture uh, of a sunset and you just, you basically type in, Hey, I'd like, I'd like to have a blue background with clouds and yeah. it just does it right. So, and we saw the same thing in, in programs. So it didn't kill the creativity business. It just made everybody yeah. more creative. Right. And then with programming, if you remember uh, even languages like Fortran uh, and Pascal, were going to kill the programmer because mm -hmm. they're so easy compared to machine uh, language in COBOL, right? Mm -hmm. And then what happened? Oh, then we had IDEs. IDEs were really going to kill the programmer, yeah. right? We're not going to need as many programmers. So here we are in 2023. Uh, we're short about 50% on the amount of programmers we need. Uh, so uh, AI and new capabilities rarely kill stuff when they let more people do more. Right. And this is why I'm so skeptical on this. We're going to lose so many jobs with generative AI. Yeah. The one example that comes to mind where, where we did lose jobs, we didn't refill it, 
is when we moved. I, I, I grew up, I was born in Ohio. I grew up in Ohio in the Rust Belt where uh, a lot of manufacturing jobs, automotive, steel, plastics, uh, went from the Cleveland area and the Toledo area and the Dayton area to either Asia or they went south, right? Mm -hmm. And there was no reskilling. And that's why I'm not surprised that uh, Dayton, Ohio is the most heroin addicted city uh, in the United States, right? And it had so many issues, uh, so many drug problems. So th there are elements where we screw up progress, but generative AI uh, helping to do things better, I don't think it's gonna be as big of a net a net job loss as, as, as we see. Quite frankly, a lot of these people don't want to even work these jobs. We can't hire people to do some of these jobs that generative AI, AI does. So uh, this is just yet another example here. Te technologically, the COBOL to Java is, is COBOL you can only run on certain programs. If I have a Java application, I can run that on freaking anything, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I can run it on something, but, but don't confuse that you're going to get the same uptime as, let's say, not running it on a mainframe. <laughs> right, an IBM mainframe. Even AWS has tried to take the IBM mainframe out, and they just gave up. Okay, uh, I, I've talked to one bank in twelve years that has actually completely gotten off a mainframe. Yeah, and and the reason why it's so hard is not just oh it's locked in and the programmer died, right? It, it's because in the Western worlds we have what's called the eleven millisecond rule. Mm -hmm. That's that's for the U.S. That a financial transaction has to take a le less than eleven milliseconds, mm -hmm. and if it doesn't take eleven, you get fined. Okay, and also the seven nines yeah. uh, as well. So you might be thinking, boy, IBM, why would you ever want to do this? You're going to get crushed. No, this is running COBOL applications uh, either on on Z mainframes or or Power, but on Java where you have a thousand times more programmers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The scariest part is that uh, most of COBOL is on uh, government machines. That is crazy. By the way, the whole Southwest thing, uh, debacle, they were blaming on a mainframe. It was actually on a Sun, a Sun Spark box <laughs> running COBOL. Really? Running COBOL applications, not yeah. Windows ninety, not not a Windows ninety five old Dell PC. Like what? When it was great, Saturday Night Live did a <laughs> did a lampoon, and they did a fake Southwest Airlines commercial, and they pointed to the, the Windows ninety five OS. <laughs> oh, no, I love that. No, no, isn't that great? I, I love to see um, where it hasn't booted into Windows. It's on DOS, right? <laughs> one of these uh, one of these systems.